Aldrin, we'll start with you. This was a banner year for you, a banner year for the Hunger Games, uh, a banner year for everything. Why don't you tell me so a couple of your favorite moments that happened? And you can you can dip back into last December if you want to, but you know try to make it as much of the year 2012 as possible. And I have the strong suspicion one of them is going to be that uh, YouTube video involving you meeting a couple of cast members. But I'm not going to put the words in your mouth. I'm going to let you decide if that's one of your top moments. All right. Well, the first one that I had on my little list was actually, it's funny you mentioned it because it did happen in 2011, but it was on the 24th of December. Um, that was the first time the mayors were on HG Fireside Chat. Um, and that was my first time ever being on the podcast. And I was crapping my pants the entire time because I was so nervous. But um, it was a really fun experience. So that's probably my num- – well, it's, it's number one on my, my top list uh, just because it was my first time being on the show, and I was really scared and excited and all of the above. Understand, understandably, Aldrin, very much understandably. Um, Rebecca Griffin, out over in Portland, fun bird. who is going to <laughs> – is going to provide us with a Pacific Northwest take on the holidays as well as her year in review. Um, Rebecca, I do remember, I know one of the highlights for you was seeing Alexander Ludwig Cato on screen for the first time. But putting that, that aside, um, looking back, just how, how would you describe the best moments of your year? And, you, and, you know, not to get all sappy, but... You know, this was – we called this back in January the year of the Hunger Games. I really think this was the year of the Hunger Games, or at least the first half year was certainly the the six months of the Hunger Games, considering how successful it was. Um, but I think it really just changed changed the, the landscape for everything. So um, feel free to wax poetic if you would like like to. But <laughs> what, when, looking back, what are, what, are, what are some of your finest moments? It could be anything – from, you know, maybe even doing a personal post on Victor's Village to, you know, the whole premiere experience? I can't really quantify it. I mean, uh, maybe I'll do my best channeling you because we know you like to wax philosophic. Um, but <laughs> it, was, it was a culmination of things. I mean, um, on, a, on, a, on a personal level, it was great going to the premiere and not necessarily seeing the film, but meeting all of you guys or all of these people that we're basically in constant communication with. And that may not be technically Hunger Games, but it is related to the Hunger Games for us. So I think that that's a, that's a top moment or experience having to do with it. But um, another top moment, well, for me, because I was so very – emotionally invested in the casting of Finnick O'Dare. But when when Sam was finally officially cast it was like it was it was a huge sigh of relief for me personally. Even though I was adamant about of Army Hammer being cast. I mean, I knew it was a shot in the dark. So well, yes, is it, would it be safe to say and I've been waiting a few weeks to say this actually to you, Rebecca, on air. What? But would it be safe to say that Army Hammer was not the lone ranger who could fill the role of <laughs> Finnick in your eyes. <laughs> you, you need to say that again. I'm not really – what do you mean? <laughs> he is the lone ranger. The lone. He, can't, he, can't, he can't get away from that. That is all around for the rest of his life. Um, what do you mean? <laughs> I, I'm just kidding. I'm saying he wasn't the only person who could be Finnick. That's all I was saying. Oh, no, I never, I never believed that, that, that there was only one person who, who could, who could, who could fulfill that role, and I'm very, very happy so far with Sam. I've been a fan of Sam for years, so I'm very glad that they picked him over many of the other people who were rumored. (laughs) Many, some of those people just, like, scared me so much, going, why would you cast? him over someone who seemingly has more talent. In my opinion, another, was it? No, 
well, that was in 2011. Oops. It's okay. But when you the, can say it was 2011. When the trailer first um, was released and we finally saw real footage of of what we'd all imagined for so long, that was kind of kind of a momentous moment in our lives. I think, uh, what else? So it just all starts to blend together, and I'm, part of me kind of wants to forget this, this year a little bit, only only bits and pieces. But um, <laughs> so it was it was honestly such an eventful year, especially the the first the months leading up to March, and then of course the incredible atmosphere as the movie was was hitting screens, and um, there was just that fever pitch explosion um, that mm-hmm. I it does tend to get jumbled. In, uh, in my mind too So I definitely know where you're coming from But is there a post maybe that you could say Other than the A, a, a miscellaneous post That you did on Victor's Village Looking back that you just really loved uh, Being able to mm-hmm. write um, I, 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 It's going to sound strange But I tend to like to Write about more controversial things That, that pop up in, in Fandom that sort of Get people's blood up And, and yeah, you know, pisses them off, but but it's been unpleasant over the last I guess couple of years. The um, all the almost racist implications that that have been brought up, having to do with casting or 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 um, character description or or whatnot. But seemingly over and over and over again, I would have to write a post about misconception or adherence to a vision of a character in their head and just up in arms of disappointing but but also from a sociological point of view interesting to to witness over and over and over again just to see how far we have not come as a society. So I would say um the post that I wrote about when when Jeffrey Wright was cast as as um DC. That was interesting to see people's reaction to this decidedly talented black man being cast in a role that everyone had had seemingly envisioned as a I don't know like a crotchety you know glass glasses wearing um, version of like Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> At least that's what what people seem to repeatedly just how they picture him. No, I I appreciate. First of all, the thought that you put into that answer. I, I know that's kind of a screwball question, but you really def, definitely gave an introspective response, and uh, that's terrific. So thank you for that, Rebecca. That was very enlightening. Uh-huh. Let's go to Ariana, since she's the guest of the hour, and I had many wonderful experiences out on the West Coast. Ariana, I'm just going to kind of give you the floor and, and let you – Say whatever you want about the year that was, um, and just anything you, you, in general you you just want to say about what your experience has been like since you don't get to talk that much on here. Yeah, I mean it's been a fun, fun year. I mean I've gone to go down to Lionsgate, and I mean it's fun going down there, but it's even better just getting to see all the other fan site people because we don't get to see each other that often. But I mean I guess the premiere was the best. Hard. And I just, I'm going to get a little bit sappy right now, but I remember right before the movie was going to start and me and Teresa were like holding on to each other and like the Lionsgate logo popped up and we both just started bawling for some reason, but that was, I don't know, it was like a little defining moment for me because it was like we have done so much for this and we're finally getting to see, you know, the final product and everything. So it's just, it's been an amazing year. I know next year is going to be even better too. <laughs> I I think so. You know, I was feeling like there's such a long gap between the two movies, but it's that we're really not that far away now. We we all talked about the year when we hit that year threshold in November, but I I was just thinking how next December, you know, if we're on here at the end of the year talking about great moments, we're gonna have a lot of really incredible things to discuss because Catching Fire will have then been out for about a month and a month and a, and a week, so. I think we're next year could very well be just as much the year of the Hunger Games as this one was, and that's I'll think it that's pretty back. exciting. We'll back yeah, I think so too. And remember, the the few months when you say like the six months leading up to the first film, 
there was a lot of stuff that Lionsgate was pumping out, and you could see, you saw pictures already on Entertainment Weekly, like almost every other week, it seemed like, of Hunger Games stuff. So I think they were almost there in the home stretch, and that's going to be yeah. super fun. Yeah, 